Good afternoon, lads and lassies, Irish Demon here. Back with a kind of a video. Um, this actually isn't my video. There's a reason that I haven't made a video in a couple of days. I've been pretty sick with um, with hay fever. Uh, I get it kind of around this time of year. My eyes get really, really sore. My throat gets pretty sore. I can talk for like a couple of minutes and then my voice starts to kind of go. I've just been coughing and spluttering. All that kind of stuff. Um, so I have been kind of self-isolating basically just in case. Uh, so I'm going to head down maybe today and get the COVID tests just down the street for me. And it's a drive through thing. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that today. Uh, I don't think it is, but because I get this all the time around this time of year. And then to make matters worse, I got bitten by something. Um, either a mosquito or maybe another spider or something like that. And I always have a really bad reaction to that. And then that added to... Yeah, you guys know what it's all about. Anyway, I'm going to play a video for you guys. Um, this is my interview with Alien X Gaming, somebody I'm sure most of you will know. Um, and uh, yeah, I got to feed the algorithm. So uh, definitely check this out. Uh, we had a great conversation. He's an awesome guy. Go check out his channel and make sure and subscribe because he did a lot of really cool interviews already uh, with the rest of the Beardsmen and some other people. So definitely go check that out. Um, there's big things coming there. Uh, but yeah, lads and lassies, with that, I'm going to sign off because I'm exhausted already and I've got to go back and lie down under the uh, the AC on the couch. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your support. Um, some lovely kind messages over the past few days. I really appreciate it. But yeah, I've got to go take some North and, and lie down right now because I'm exhausted. Thank you so much, lads and lassies. Slancha. Hey, what's up, everybody? Alien X Gaming here. Um, I got another YouTuber that I like to watch. I've been watching for a while now. Um, I got Irish Demon with us tonight. Irish, what's going on, man? Hey, good to be here. I'm doing really well. Thanks. Excellent. So, um, as you're already aware, I'm trying to um, interview a lot of different people. Um, you know that I watch or I talk to in the chat and all that stuff like that. So that's what. Um, I'm gonna be looking forward to doing is you know getting you know people on here you know so people can get to know them. so I mean that's gonna be my goal I know people have been watching you for a very long time so I'm sure that um, they know quite a bit about you but the point of this whole thing is some people don't a lot of people don't um, they like to know who they're supporting who they're watching um, so I've got some questions for you that are some basic questions about you and then sure a little thing. bit about the content that you t you uh, create so are you ready sir sounds good awesome ready to go okay first of all what's your first name <clears throat> my first name is uh is kind of two really uh either john or sean sean is just the gaelic version of john uh, and i do go by both uh to different people so you're welcome to call me either oh so, yeah very cool i know everybody just usually calls you irish anyway don't matter no. <laughs> um, exactly yeah <laughs> um how old are you I am 28 years old. Oh. 28 years young, I should say. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And where are you from, sir? So I'm originally from the south of Ireland, uh, a city called Cork. Um, so it's like an old Viking city or whatever. And uh, now I live in Western Australia in Perth, which is like a brand new city uh, right in the middle of the desert. The most isolated city on Earth. Oh, wow. All right. And what made you move to that? Move to Perth? So my um, my partner, Mrs. Demon, she is uh, originally from Perth, from Western Australia, uh, but she spent about half of her life in Ireland, which is where we met. And uh, when Ireland went into the most recent recession, uh, we figured it would probably be better for us to um, to hightail out of there and try to get a better life. So we moved over here, and it's just an awesome place. Australia is amazing, beautiful awesome. place, lovely people, and yeah, love it over here. That's great, man. All right. Um, now I know that you you breed fish. Is that correct? I sure do. I've got a couple of my tanks here behind me, and some shrimp tanks over here, and some more tanks over there. And I've got a whole fish room out the back. Um, so yeah, at the moment I've got about maybe two and a half or three thousand fish. Um, so I breed for private buyers and for um, pet stores and things like that. Uh, and then I also breed a lot of kind of high-end, kind of rare fish and things like that. Um, so I have very specific customers uh, all over Australia for that kind of stuff. So it's, it's more of a hobby, but, um, you know, pay some of the bills, I guess. So it's, it's uh, And it's a lot of fun. I love it. 
That's awesome. I'll uh, I'll post a link down below because I know you made a, um, a video about your um, your fishery or whatever you want to call that <laughs> setup. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, I, I did a video. Just a few people have asked. There's a lot of people that subscribe to me that are big into fish, mm -hmm. so a lot of people are asking for a tour of my fish room and tanks and stuff like that. So I did a tour, of most of the tanks, not all of them, but the majority of them anyway. Yeah. Sure. So you can check that out down below. Yep. Awesome. Um, and you also have a couple other pets. What do you have? I sure do. I have um, two beautiful little chihuahuas, uh, Minnie and Floki. They're oh, they're like two pounds each and uh, a couple of years old now. Um, my two little buddies love them to bits. I also breed um, King Quail, which is like the world's smallest chicken. Basically, it's a tiny little, little bird um, that are really, really popular over here. So I breed those guys too. So I've got got about 30 or 40 of them right now because i just sold off a whole lot um wow. but yeah that's that's about it for pets really that's awesome and like half a million fish <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right um let's see here let's talk about the young irish life what was your first job my first job was working for my dad. Um, my dad was a confectioner and a chef, and he had a few like little um, uh, like burger, what would you call it? Like a burger float or like a burger vans, which okay. are super popular in, in Ireland. Um, so we would park them outside pubs or on building sites and things like that. Uh, so that was my first job running that for uh, about two or three years. Um, right. And then kind of after that, I just went into security. That's been what I worked at for most of my life and then worked for Apple for a few years and Airbnb doing fraud investigation and stuff like that. And um, yeah, then I moved over here. I became a custody officer. So like kind of like prison officer. And uh, I did that for the last few years. Then COVID hit and then I switched to YouTube and breeding fish. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I guess I don't have to ask you what your currently job or your current job is. No. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, yeah, pretty much YouTube and breeding fish. <laughs> That's awesome. That's very cool. Um, you got to do what you like to do, man. All right. right. Um, let's see here. You are also part of the Four Beardsmen of the Apocalypse. So sure I've seen am. that. It's very, very early in the morning for me on Sundays, but you know, not so early for you because yes. you're like 14 hours ahead of me or so. But um, Yeah, it's like midnight for me, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> but uh, when I'm awake, I usually try to stop by. But how did you meet the other yeah. Beardsmen? Um, it actually all started off with um, myself and PhD Tony, actually. Uh, we, the two of us fight a lot. We argue a lot on the Beardsman. I think that's one of the things that brings people back because we really challenge each other. Um, and that's what I love about Tony, that we're able to have those really challenging conversations and then just have a laugh straight after. You know, we don't kill each other too much. Um, so basically, myself and PhD Tony were on a live stream randomly and he had just done an awesome debate and i passed a few remarks and i asked him if he'd like to come on my one of my first live streams and then i met johnny o and jl through kind of similar avenues and one night i said let's all get on a uh, on a live stream together and just have a chat and have some fun and so a good few people turned out we had a great live stream and i was like what are we going to call this show we're going to have to call it something and do it as regularly as we can and so we figured all four of us had beards. So we came up with the four beardsmen. And uh, it's just been, I think it's been about five months now. We've been doing it every single Sunday. And um, we swap between each of our four channels um, just to help each of our channels out. And it's just been awesome. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, I look forward to it every week. And, um, you know, they're great guys to chat with. Very, very fun and very informative. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great show. I really enjoy doing it. That's awesome. I I, I like I enjoy watching the show, um, and I, yeah. I JL um, he told me about um, some other stuff with the uh, with the Fort Beardsman. One thing he mentioned that I, have, yeah. I was curious about is so why did the other three of you guys stop calling it the Four Beardsman of the Apocalypse and now just shorten it to the Four Beardsman? That's a good question. I think it, I I actually don't know the answer to that question. I know <laughs> I just call it the Beardsman. I don't even call it the Four Beardsman. I'm that lazy. I just call it the Beardsman or just Beardsman. Um, that's an interesting question. I'm going to have to look into that and see why why it is that we did stop calling it the Four Beardsman of the Apocalypse. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to look into that one and get back to you with an answer. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Um, 
So how did you choose Irish Demon as your YouTube name? So I actually used to have a channel um, about two years ago, which was a, a weight loss channel because I was much, much heavier than I am now. I was um, uh, I got really sick about five years ago. And so I used to be really, really fit and I got really, really sick. And I put on a huge amount of weight. I was over 400 and something pounds. I was massive. Now, to be fair, a lot of it was like um, water weight from pain meds and things like that. Um, and from being sick, I guess. And so I lost a lot of it pretty quickly. I had a pretty successful YouTube channel. I, I About what I have now in terms of uh, subscribers, maybe slightly more. And that was called The Irish Weight Demon. Um, and um, that... I, I ended that channel a couple of years ago because I got really sick again and I lost the vision of my left eye and I just wasn't feeling it. So I ended up deleting the channel because I hadn't posted for a long, long time. Kind of wish I hadn't done that now, but, you know, it is what it is. But um, so, yeah, somebody somebody called me a, a weight demon one day saying that because I was able to kill that weight so quickly or so easily. Hmm. And um, then I, I, at the time, I think my channel was just called like... Uh, God only knows what. Uh, something really stupid. And then I was like, I think I might switch it to Weight Demon. And then I figured I'd call it Irish Weight Demon so people know who it is. And yeah, just drop the weight. And so I dropped the weight from the name and went with Irish Demon. My other channel uh, that I've started up is a vlogging channel. And so I'm planning on trying to travel the world as best I can on a budget. And uh, so I do have to drop the demon from that because, um, you know, obviously in some cultures, people take that very, very seriously, the term demon. Um, so I do need to drop that from my name for that purpose. So you can check that out. It's called Lost Irishman uh, is the name I settled on. Um, That's cool. And uh, so, yeah, you guys can check that out too. I'm going to be starting off in Western Australia doing some interesting like abandoned um water park is one that's coming up in the next week or so that's so that's going to be the first show over there yeah very cool yeah i'm going to be looking forward to that i heard you talking about it a couple days ago or whatever but um but yeah yeah i'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to filming it yeah it's going to be wicked bad. yeah all for sure you know sure. jeez i don't know um i don't know how you're gonna not be broke every single trip you make you know <laughs> i know i know i'm gonna try my best I'm, I'm gonna like when i go to india for example uh i'm gonna stay in the cheapest grubbiest shittiest places possible <laughs> um i'm probably not going to eat the street food to be fair i've got a lot of friends that have traveled india and they said don't do street food because <laughs> it's not going to end up well and i've got a i had a massive surgery on my stomach last year so i have to be really careful with certain foods um, so I, I, that side of things, you probably won't see too much from me, but definitely the shitty hotels and all that stuff. I'll be, I'll be rocking that. That's for sure. Very cool. All right. Um, so your current channel, um, Irish Demon. What uh, what kind of content do you usually put on there? So I'm a I'm kind of a talking head reaction guy. Uh, so I I I'm passionate about um, like space travel. I love science. Although I'm not a I'm not a scientist. I don't like you know what I mean. I don't have a huge technical knowledge where science is concerned. But I love science and I love technology. And um, when I realized that there was flat earthers out there and what some of them were doing, I was like, oh, I've got to fight back against this bullshit. And so yeah, I started doing the anti flat Earth stuff. Then um, the current pandemic happened. And it just kind of drove it because with the pandemic and people being in lockdown all the time, a lot of these conspiracy theories are coming to the fore and some of them are quite harmful. Um, so, yeah. So for now, I'm doing a lot of reaction videos. I try to do one every day if I can. Um, I'm also going to start going back to my roots. Um, I, I was an actor for a long, long time and I used to do a lot of stand up comedy. So I'm going to go back to my roots a little bit and do some sketches as well. So I'm going to film some sketches and put that up on my channel just for some fun. And, um, yeah, that's about what I do on there. I do some live streams every week as well, just to get to know people. And a lot of the live streams are just me just interacting with people and right. a lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. So how many subscribers do you have? Uh, right now, let me just check. Uh, it jumped a fair bit over the past week. Um, past two weeks, it's gone up to uh, 3,350. Awesome. So well on the way to 4,000. Um, I just hit 2,000 about two weeks ago and had a, a live stream to celebrate that. And then within a week, it was up to 3,000. So it's been doing really, really well. I'm really happy with how well it's been going. Right. Do live streams or your content that you have recorded um, get the best reactions or the most reactions? 
Definitely the creator content. Um, when it comes to like me, I'm, so I'm trying to build this into a business essentially and, and try to do this professionally because I really love it. I love performing. Um, so when it comes to the financial side of things, the live streams are marginally better because obviously you get super chats, donations, sure. members as well. That's a huge thing for me. Members and um, Patreons really, I, I like it might seem like a very small amount and you know to some extent it is because again i'm just started off but my patreons and memberships alone have allowed me to purchase a better camera has allowed me to get um a really good um uh, what you call it a gimbal for going out and doing my vlog channel and stuff like that so it's had a huge impact the creative content though is what really brings in new subscribers um a lot of people don't like watching live streams um it, it doesn't appeal to most people actually uh, so the creative content really helps bring people in. And I do premieres of all of them, which uh, YouTube seems to really like because there's a lot of interaction from the public and stuff like that. So um, I do try to premiere every video if I can. But yeah, um, yeah definitely the creative content's better for getting subs in, I think. Fair enough. All right. Um, let's see here. When did you start actually creating um, content? Uh, would that be... that? Obviously, that's going to be your weight channel, but... Um... Yeah, the the current, as in the flat Earth kind of stuff. Sure. When the current channel that you do and content you do, when did you first start doing that? Um, it would have been about eight months ago, um, or wh whenever Nathan Thompson started shouting at kids in a in a oh, school. God. That was yeah, it was around that time. So it's actually nearly a year ago, if you think about it. It's about a year ago. Um, that's when I started making the flat earth stuff. And then I figured out that this was actually a thing. Like it wasn't just this one guy. And then it just <laughs> went from there. It's just, yeah. So I started watching a lot of the flat earth debates to learn more about it. And then eventually I started breaking down the debates of, um, of other YouTubers and other debaters. Uh, I'm not really a debater myself. I will be doing one day on, um, hold on. You're going to have to repeat that. Hold uh, on. We got a, we got a lag here. Uh, oh, that's all right. Yeah, go ahead and repeat um, what you just said. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing a debate on Sunday. It's actually my first live debate. Well, my first proper live debate uh, against Rad Vlad over on Team Skeptic's channel. So that's going to be... I don't even know what the topic is, that's to be honest. Be He's kind of jumping between topics. But it doesn't even matter. I'll, I'll have fun with the guy anyway. Yeah, they were, but, they were um, trying to get what, yeah so that's going to be a first for me. They were either going for, what, Flat Earth or Atheism, I think, was what he was trying to get you and Rad Vlad to Pretty do. Pretty much. Yeah. So either one, either one I'm happy to do. That'll be interesting. It'll be a good time. Oh, uh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, I guess since you're doing reaction videos and stuff like that, is that your favorite type of content, or do you prefer to make the Flat Earth um, idiot content? Um, I, I kind of like both. Um, when it comes to creating content, I like to do the reactions videos most. Um, when it comes to watching content, uh, like what I watch myself on YouTube, um, I, I personally prefer long form um, and more kind of talk show or like um, things that don't require you to sit down and actually watch it on the screen. Um, I do a lot of work here in terms of the fish tanks take up about four or five hours a day. The dogs are very demanding. I do all the cooking and dishes and stuff here because Mrs. Demon works long hours. So for me to be able to stick my headphones on and just listen, um, that's what I like. So that's, for example, that's why I love Johnny O's um, uh videos the dingleberries and klingons and stuff like that because i know i've got 20 or 30 minutes that i can just listen and not have to like go on and look you know what somebody's trying to show you or whatever uh same goes for jl warren phd tony team skeptic fight the flat earth all those guys um that's the style of content that i like and creaky blinder um is one of my absolute idols so i love creaky blinder to bits um, that's awesome and um, my channel is kind of similar to his. We don't get too deep into the science stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we just point and laugh. <laughs> yeah, when I, fir I first um, started watching Creaky a while back, but um, I could not understand a damn thing he would say because, like, you know, oh, he's got the Welsh very, accent. Very thick, yes, very thick very accent. strong. But very I think strong. I got a little bit more. Used it's not to it. so bad for me. <laughs> Yeah, you get used to it over time. Um, I, when you first hear somebody speak like with a Welsh, with a strong Welsh accent, I think he's from Swansea, so it's a pretty strong Welsh accent out that area. Um, it it can be a bit like what 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 did he just say? Yeah. But as time goes by, your ear kind of adapts to it pretty well. <laughs> That's pretty cool. 
Okay, so now you're going to be starting a travel channel. Um, I think yeah. that's awesome, first of all. But um, places that you've already been, what was your favorite place that you visited? My favorite country that I ever visited was probably Turkey. Um, I visited there, I guess it was about 10 years ago now. Um, it was one of the most incredible countries in the world. It's it's the part of Turkey I was in is down um, kind of by the by like Greece in the Mediterranean area. So you're about it where I was staying. You're about a 10 mile boat ride to Kos, uh, the island of Kos in Greece. So in in that area, it's a huge. Um, it's just where loads of different cultures just got smashed together in a small and I mean beautiful place. So I got to see on one hand some beautiful Ottoman architecture and then you go around the corner and there's beautiful Greek architecture, some Roman architecture, amphitheaters. It just had everything. The food was incredible. The people are super friendly in Turkey. They're, the people, in, people of Turkey are without a doubt some of the nicest individuals I've ever met. Everywhere I went they were so friendly. Um, the culture there is beautiful. The music is beautiful. It's, if 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 I could recommend any country in the world to visit, Turkey is definitely up on the top. Mediterranean Turkey specifically, um, uh, like Bodrum or Bitez or any of those areas, um, I would just highly recommend. It's not crazy hot either. It's not like Australia hot, but it's beautiful there. It's <laughs> magnificent. That's very nice. Yeah, I, I have never been to any other country that was like overwhelmingly awesome um you yeah know, americans think of well at least i do of travel a little bit different than people from the other areas of the world because most of the world hates america you yeah. know so you know <laughs> it's just true you know it is what it is you know but um you know so that's that's it very is. awesome that you you're gonna be able to get to go everywhere that you want to go to without having you know real issues that um exactly. you know, some of us may have like there's, with with my passport, there's pretty much no countries that I that I would be barred from entering. Um, there's a few African countries I really want to visit that would be quite difficult um, to get into. Um, I always wanted to go to North Korea because I'm just fascinated by it. But at the same time, I can't bring myself around to pay money to support a regime that does what North Korea does to its people. So I'll probably go to South Korea. Um, I'm planning a, a week trip from Japan over to South Korea. And then I'll probably go north to the DMZ and go into the little UN huts or whatever. So I'll technically be in North Korea. <laughs> um, and then um, I'm obsessed with the former Soviet Union. And that is why um, I got into this whole thing. I love um, Bald and Bankrupt. He travels around the former Soviet Union. And, um, yeah, that's another thing I really want to go to, like Chernobyl and places like that. So I'm super excited. It's kind of going to be like dark tourism, I guess. That's kind of what I'm going for. Okay. That's what I love. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I think that's going to be, It'd be some great. awesome content. I can't wait. I really do. For sure. Okay. So you've got plenty of times you've asked or said, mentioned your car. What kind of car do you have? Oh, yeah. All right, so I just recently switched cars. Um, I went full Aussie lifestyle when I moved here, and I bought a four-liter V8 supercharged Ford Falcon. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I've like in Europe, everybody drives tiny one-liter cars. I've only ever had small cars in Europe, and uh, so I came here and I was like, I could just drive this car and not pay ten grand on fuel and insurance. I'm gonna get it. So I did. I loved it. It was a lot of fun, but it's just it was just too big and it was too awkward. So uh, my my neighbor and friend, he uh, has a, um, a car place where he sells secondhand cars. And I had him on the lookout. I was like, I want a little European hot hatch. And one day I was driving home from um, from dropping Mrs. Demon off to work. And there was a guy parked outside with this mint condition Peugeot 207 GTI, which is one of my dream cars. So I pulled right in. I was like, are you selling this car to, to, to my mate? And he was like, yeah, I'm swapping it in. I was like, what can you tell me about it? So the guy put like 10 grand into the engine. It's a full like stage two turbo and all this insane gear in the car. And uh, like 10 grand bucket seats. Like the guy went all out on this car. So I was like, okay. I was like, that's good to know. So I rang Kent. I was like, there's a guy outside your door with a Peugeot GTI. GTI buy it and I'll swap you my car for it. So... We did a straight swap, so I'm super happy. I love my car to bits. It's 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 small. People laugh at it, but they don't laugh when you're at the lights and they leave them in your dust. <laughs> uh, I'll be happy to race you anytime I can ship my car over to Australia. 
<laughs> yeah, what, what have you got again? You've got um... a Grand Prix. I've got a 2002 Grand Prix with about oh, yeah, 420 yeah. horse at the wheels. Um, nice. So, I mean, it's just a 3.8 liter V6 supercharged. Um, nice. It, it's Sounds like crazy. <laughs> it, it's fun stuff. Bet. But um, I take it to, I, uh, the, my, to the track. My car is... Um... My car is like three. After all of the upgrades and tuning, it, it's about three ten brake between between three and three ten, depending. Uh, temperature is a huge factor in it in Australia as well. So sure. when it's super hot, you don't get as much HP. That's for sure. But my car weighs about the same as a MacBook, so it's uh, a lot of power to weight ratio. So yeah. you got to have the launch control on. You wouldn't think it looking at the car that it's pretty fast, but definitely whenever I've not raced in case my mother's watching this um <laughs> i've always kind of like i'll pull away like the thing just goes it just as as they say in top gear it just fucks right off uh but when you're going up against a v8 it shits all over a v8 off the line obviously because of the power to weight ratio but once you get over like 80 miles an hour the v8 just pulls off it's oh, just sure. gone it's just got buckets of power so like you know but a racetrack you want that quick power you want that easily mm -hmm. accessible speed so i'll bring him to a track any day man as long as there's corners i'll win <laughs> oh, come on now. yeah i only do um i actually take my car to a quarter mile straight track um usually oh, I'd have several no times chance. during the summer it's awesome i reckon I'd, I'd have a good chance over the first eighth of a mile but after that i'm, <laughs> I'm toast against the v8 or anything v8 or v6 supercharged toast nice I win off the line. I'll I'll beat you in a ten meter race any day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Um, okay. Who was the largest influence that you've had in choosing what to create? Uh, biggest influence on me has been Team Skeptic. Um, so I've followed Team since day one, um, and I I really enjoy his content, and he's me and him talk all week you know maybe two or three times a week on the phone or whatever and he gives me a lot of um tips and a lot of guidance and he watches most of my videos so he um he gets a really good impression of what i'm creating so he's able to give me really good feedback and that's helped a lot actually um i um i have a lot to thank him for uh, another person is definitely creaky blinder because i just just thoroughly enjoy his style his he doesn't swear he doesn't and i've tried to cut down on the swearing but it's really hard for an irishman to not swear hmm. um That'd and so yeah i like that he he's clean in what he does which is probably where i should be going but to go <laughs> more mainstream i guess but um but yeah he's he's another one there's there's a few others like when it comes to the technical stuff obviously phd tony's incredible um professor phil bell is another one those guys are just amazing when it comes to that kind of thing Awesome. Okay, so one of the questions was going to be, um, is there any indication your channel may go a different direction? However, you're already going to be starting another channel. Um, are you yeah, gonna, are you so gonna I'm going to keep uh, Definitely, definitely. The Irish Demon channel, I don't care if my other channel gets 100 million followers. I'm still going to do the Irish Demon channel just as I do it now. Because um, as much as I'd like to do it kind of as my full-time job, it's still just a hobby to me. So if I got demonetized tomorrow, I'd be pissed, but I would still make content because it's part of who I am now, really. So uh, the Irish Demon channel won't be going anywhere, no matter how big the other one gets. It, I mean, during busy periods, it might slow down a bit, but I'm definitely not going to leave it hanging, that's for sure. Very cool. Um, do you have any specials that are coming up? Um, any collabs aside from that debate that you were talking about earlier? I am working on something with a group of people um, at the moment. Um, so myself and team have a few collabs. Um, it, kind, not in the works yet. We've just talked about some ideas. Um, but also with some other uh, creators in the community, we're going to be doing... Uh, I'm going to try do it. It's going to be uh, once every two weeks, we're going to do a collab video on my channel uh, where different creators give their point of view on a specific video or on um, a specific flat earther or whatever. So I think the first one's probably going to be Nathan Thompson because uh, everybody knows him. So, I mean, everybody's going to be able to find something to say. And we'll see how that video goes. If that goes well, I think the next one would probably be Kent Hovind or maybe CC. Um, so yeah, there's there's a few few ideas in the works. That's for sure. That would be awesome. 
All right. Um, let's see here. I guess that's really about all all the questions that I've got. Um, is there anything that you would like to mention about yourself that I did not ask you? Just something that you may, uh, think people may want to know. That's a good question. Um, hmm. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but if anybody does ever have any questions for me, I'm open book for most things so like people can ask me anything in the chat or in comments or an email or whatever you know i'm really really slow to respond though because i i am such a procrastinator you know what i'm talking about i'm a terrible procrastinator so if i'd never respond to you just pester me uh, and i won't be offended i won't be annoyed by that because i know it's my fault so i've got no problem with that but um yeah so if anybody's got any questions or whatever they can hit me up anytime i'm happy to chat perfect all right. Um, other than that, that's really about it. Oh, since I got you on the spot, I can ask this question, and you can still decline it. But sure. Why doesn't Mrs. Demon ever come on the show? Why doesn't she say hello? I mean, all we see is a CGI hand every now and then holding you, holding a exactly. Chihuahua. Hmm. Exactly. So Mrs. Demon has been like, um, uh, only a few of your uh, viewers will know this show. There's a show called Still Game. It's been going on in Scotland for like. 20 years or whatever and there's one character in it you never see her face um but she's in every episode so mrs demon's kind of like that so we're planning um we're, we're planning on doing a weekly podcast um myself and mrs demon like a two-hour just us shooting the shit podcast live um so i'm trying to save up to get her a, a second mic so we can get all that working um but i'm trying to get her to come on she's very she's very shy uh, and self conscious. She's absolutely beautiful, I might add, but she's so self conscious and so shy. So I think once we get the podcast going, we might eventually get a second camera set up. Um, you won't be disappointed. She's really smart and really, really funny. She's one of the funniest people I know. A lot of the jokes you hear on my channel are kind of things that come from her, you know what I mean? <laughs> she's, um, yeah, she's really, really clever. She really is very funny. Awesome. You're going to have to keep everybody updated on that, man. Um, absolutely absolutely all right i guess that's all i got um so if there's anything you'd like to say right now before we go i'm gonna go and wrap her up um i think that's about it just uh check out my channel leave a comment uh comments really really help the channel um and um yeah that's that's all i got for today but thank you so much for having me on i really appreciate it i appreciate you taking the time to do this and um hopefully the people watching uh, enjoyed this and maybe they got to know you a little bit more um there's going to be links to Absolutely. your channels, obviously, down um, in the description. Go like, sub, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, join the Patreon. You know, you guys got to support the community. You know, that's what we're all here for. So other than that, um, if you like Absolutely. this crap, then um, hit that like button down below, too. Subscribe to me. I know I'm nobody on the YouTube, but it's okay. It's all right, man. <laughs> no. All right, guys. Till next time. Take care. <laughs>